Okay there guys, so today what I want to talk about is applying the concept of evaluating or analyzing limits to piecewise functions. Now, why is this so important? Well, in the real world, a lot of situations are not a perfect parent function every single time. Um, what's going to happen is over time, which might be your x-axis, over time the situation is going to change and maybe there's going to be times where uh, things are increasing, things are constant, maybe they start to decrease rapidly and then increase rapidly. And what that's going to form is a bunch of different pieces of history with whatever you're studying um, and it's going to look like a piecewise graph. Um, so I think to, to begin this we're just going to start with uh, creating something that uh, you've probably seen before in, in earlier math classes. Maybe you've got, uh, I'll draw an arrowhead here, Maybe we have a pretty constant situation and then um, that event will end and maybe jump up to another another place and we'll just have some fun with this. Let's see. Okay, that looks fun. And then um, maybe I'll jump up again here. Actually maybe I'll maybe I'll skip over a little bit and pick up here. Do something like that a ginormous hole, but whatever. Okay, so here's just a little bit going on inside of a piecewise function. Um, in Algebra 2 and, and Pre-Cal, you would have talked about putting equations to these graphs. Uh, maybe you would have talked about where things are increasing or decreasing or constant. Um, you should know about what a hole means um, on a graph. And um, I'm also going to assume in this video that you have a definition of what a limit is. Maybe even you've talked about limits with your parent functions in class, and now we're just going to step it up a notch, okay? So let's start talking limits with this graph, okay? Um, sometimes, you know, when, when you're asked to evaluate a limit, the most important thing to look at is what is x approaching? Because sometimes it's a, it's a place on your graph, we'll call this f of x, this entire graph will be f of x, okay? f of x, okay. So sometimes it's a place on your graph where things are, are not questionable. I mean, everything is nice and smooth. Like as x approaches zero, when I come to x is zero and I look up at my graph, I mean, this is, this is pretty. This is a nice situation. And on both sides, the graph is trying to approach a y value of three. So there's no surprises there and, and no tricks there. Uh, but a lot of people have questions about what's happening sort of everywhere else. So let's say I ask you to find the limit as x approaches negative 2, okay? Now as we are looking at x approaching negative 2, there's a couple things happening here. Um, if we are coming from the left side, then we would be on this piece of the graph. And as we're coming from the left, the y value that we're trying to approach is actually 1, okay? And the way that that is, is denoted is, uh, is a one-sided limit. Um, so as x approaches negative 2, and if we're coming from the left, we're going to put a minus sign for from the left, and um, think of it as from the negative area, okay? So from the left is a minus, and for that, the y value that we're trying to reach is 1. But if I'm trying to approach this, this x value of negative 2 and I'm coming from the right side of the picture, then that means I'm on this part of the curve, okay? And when I'm on this part of the curve and I'm coming in this way, then what's happening is I'm trying to reach the y value of 2. So that would be written as x approaching negative 2, a plus sign would mean from the right, and the y value we're trying to hit, or the limit we're trying to reach, is a positive 2. Now, part of your definition you should already know coming into this video is that if the limit from the left and the right do not match, then overall the limit does not exist. Okay, and that's what's happening here. These values are not the same, uh, and so the limit would not exist, and that's exactly how you would answer it. They do have one-sided limits, just not an overall limit. Okay. Now, let's look at another iffy spot on the graph, and that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe uh, x approaching 4, okay? So, let me, uh, let me make some room here. Okay, so as x is approaching 4, let's talk about what's happening. Um, 
from the left side, the graph is running smoothly and we are trying to reach this y value of maybe like a negative one and a half. So we could write x approaches four from the uh, left and uh, that looks like it's gonna be about a negative one and a half. And then if we try to come at this same value of x equals four and we try to come from the right, there is no piece of graph right here for me to latch onto. So there's actually no way for me to approach it from the right. And because of that, um, this does not even have a right-sided limit. So we don't even have a limit to compare. So the overall limit of x approaching four is, is not going to exist. Okay, you have to be able to come at it from both sides and be approaching the same number. So that would also be a does not exist. Uh, the trickiest area for most of my students every year would be something like this situation up here that's happening when x is six. And I get a lot of students that immediately see it and they're like, oh, there's complications. I don't know what's happening. And so they'll put does not exist and they will be wrong. Uh, you've gotta be really careful here because just because there's a hole and another point defined somewhere, that does not mean that the limit exists. You've got to just make sure that you fit the criteria for having a limit, which is, am I approaching the same place from both the left and the right sides? Um, and in this case, you certainly are. Um, from the left, you're trying to get to a y value of one. From the right, you're trying to get to a y value of one. So this does have a limit at one. What is that random point? Well, it's a random point. It is not the limit because the graph is not trying to get there. And <clears throat> in fact, the only time you might be uh, calling upon this coordinate is if somebody actually said, okay, what is f of six? You know, if they ask for the function value when x is six, then you get to say, oh, well, that's a y value of two. But please do not confuse this and this. These are these are different things, okay? They're asking for different concepts, so just be careful uh, when distinguishing between those. And that is limits of piecewise functions in a nutshell. The only thing I left out is, is maybe if there was a vertical asymptote, but you would treat a vertical asymptote um, almost in the same way that you treat an endpoint. Um, your limit is not going to exist at a vertical asymptote if, if that's what you're asked to find because it's unbounded behavior. So it breaks one of the rules of limits. So um, hopefully, if this makes sense to you, then you, you can go on and I even have a follow-up video if you like over um, piecewise functions and the limits um, when you're given the equation instead of the graph. So join me for that if you'd like some clarification.